everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Orange Zeppelin and today is the first day of July. It is absolutely not at all a beautiful summer day outside. I know because I just did yard work for about an hour in so much fog that not even the movie The Fog had this much fog. That's actually pretty part of the course for our area is that the middle of summer it's just gonna be fog and cold and dreary and all the people coming on coming here for vacations to our beautiful beach town expecting sunshine and warm weather like what the hell is happening did you anger a pirate ghost why is it so dreary usually we get our hotter weather kind of in the middle of fall actually which is kind of nice because it's less touristy when we have our nice summery weather uh so so what did i get done in june i don't i had to make a list to try to figure out what did i actually do in june because i almost don't remember which the whole goal of june i said is we're gonna like calm down and take it easy and not try to do five thousand things which i actually did succeed at not getting absolutely bombarded with completely self-inflicted you know I, I will add more things on my to-do list and then complain that i have too many things to do when it's entirely my fault but i actually was fairly good this month at sticking with my original goals which was really just do some studies do a lot of practice sketches work as work on sharing my art more and trying to network more that's actually been pretty successful this month and i did do some extra art pieces i think i said in the last episode that i was going to try to do a really long run again which i know that's not an art related thing but i did run 11 miles maybe last was it last week i'm gonna look at my list what's funny <laughs> I was less sore after the 11. Oh, I started a new planner. Never mind. Uh, my planner rolls over just at the very end of June and starts at July, so I don't actually remember when I did the really long run. I was less sore after an 11 mile run than I was the other day after deadlifting for the first time in a while, which tells you how many muscles you work while deadlifting. I recommend it as long as you have a good back. But I'm proud of the long run. I also, this is probably the more exciting thing, is I did get a job interview. I did have a job interview last week. I didn't get the job, but that's actually okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just tell you guys, it was the volunteer coordinator position for the wildlife clinic where I volunteer. And it would, basically, you would be managing a bunch of people's schedules and working with a particular computer program to do that. So you did need scheduling knowledge ahead of time, which I did do that at some point when I was in college. I did work as our tutoring center receptionist and I was managing schedules. There was one other person that applied for the volunteer management, volunteer coordinator position that already knew the particular software that the wildlife clinic uses already. So they were the better fit for the job, but I was told that looking at all the student government stuff where I was doing event planning, where I was doing our posters and things, that is a really useful skill set, she was saying, for things like our social media position, because we haven't done a lot with our social media pages. Fundraising is something the Wildlife Clinic needs more help with, and she was saying it's mostly volunteers at the clinic. It's mostly older people. We do have a lot of interns that are people my age. Some of our staff members are closer to my age, but most of the volunteers specifically and the people on the fundraising committee, it's a lot of old people that probably aren't going to be around doing that for very much longer. That sounds more morbid than I mean for it to sound, and she made it sound better than that. But she was saying, like, getting younger blood in that position, and at the moment they wouldn't be able to pay me because, I mean, this is a volunteer organization that just 
pretty much lives off of donations. We used to get, I feel like the state used to give us funding and then for some reason they don't do that anymore. So it's like we're functioning off of donations. There's not a lot of paid positions at the wildlife clinic and there's not a lot of staff members and what the staff members do is basically a lot of work. And she was saying there's a possibility that the volunteer coordinator position that they just made, there might be just too much for them to do. So there could be a new paid position opening up. They would just have to look at their budget. So it is possible I could get a paid position at the wildlife clinic and that would be awesome because I really, really like volunteering there. It is actually the most normal and definitely the most comfortable job environment I've been in, even though it's not really a job, it's volunteering, but the wildlife clinic has always been a really comfortable environment and nothing <laughs> completely weird has ever happened because I've probably talked about past employment either at my last job or some things at my college. Things have always been slightly weird, whether it was me figuring out, am I going to have the same boss in a couple months? Is my place of work going to just randomly move to a different part of the campus? It, is my boss a ex-cocaine dealer like my last job? But that's a long story in itself. But point is, Wildlife Clinic, that is a fantastic environment and I'm always happy to go in there and I'd be very happy to be able to just do more for the Wildlife Clinic because I feel like right now I'm, I'm like the queen of the dirty jobs. Do you need poop power washed off of something? I am very good at that. I am... I will sweep in all the nooks and crannies that people forget about. I am very good at mopping. You're going to have the most sparkling clean clinic for like a day and then it inevitably gets dirty again. As you can imagine is the state of a wildlife clinic. There's feathers everywhere. There's random seeds and poop and it's kind of just complete chaos. But it's, it's fun and comfortable chaos. Maybe not like the baby bird room. That that's you get to have a particular personality to be hanging out in the baby bird room. You got like a tiny little baby birds all screaming at you. They all need to be fed on different time frames. Some birds will scream at you even when their crop is completely full and they can't eat anymore. And if you don't pay attention to that, you you can feed a baby bird until they explode. So you really have to be paying attention. So uh, that that all is that's all something that happened this month. Uh, what did I do art wise? <laughs> now that I've described the whole wildlife clinic thing, what did I do art wise? I mentioned doing some other just studies and some sketching. So because I feel like I haven't just done that in a while. Where usually I have a specific project I'm working on, but I haven't just sat somewhere with my sketchbook, put something stupid on in the background, and just sketched. Actually, the random just sketching and goofing off, that's what I did with my Art Snacks video that I posted yesterday, where I had kind of an interesting assortment of materials, and you'll see, you'll see if you watch the video what I was working with. When I opened the box at the beginning of the month, I was like, I'm not sure what to do with this. This doesn't really look like me. But I, I just needed to find a way to make it into something that was me. And that ended up being really fun. It was really just goofing off and not necessarily making one finished piece. So I, I did enjoy making that video. That was fun. Uh, so there was like goofing off sketches. I did some oil painting. I'm going to show you the... Do I want to show the horrifying one first or the not horrifying? I'll show the horrifying one first. Okay. So this is a painting I did based off of a photo a particular Instagram influencer posted and it, there was a lot to say. I'm not going to say who the influencer is because I did change things in the image to make them less flattering. This isn't the nicest portrayal, but I will say, I want to go on record, I did not... This is not an unkind exaggeration of her physique. She she really does just look like this. The, I, I wish no 
disrespect or hate towards this lady. It's just when your thighs look like that, I have to paint you. It, in fact, that might be more of a compliment than anything. But the, the, the you can see this isn't the nicest portrayal of this person. But I I had fun painting just the the, the thighs and the the shape of her body because I like to paint and draw really muscular people right I don't paint a lot of really huge people this was an enjoyable process and I thank her for posting that picture because it allowed art to happen and so I wish nothing but good things for this lady on that alone because I had a good time painting the texture on her thighs so that's that's something that I brought into existence. Let's let's pick the much more nice and wholesome painting now. Uh, did I mention that was oil paint? I don't know if I did, but yes, that was oil paint. I do like using oil paint. I am always a big oil paint stan. I insist it is not as scary as it might seem. It seems like an intimidating medium. It is... As some have described it a bit like painting with mud. It's very slippery, but it has a really cool, just really cool effect that you can create. And this, this is my more wholesome painting. This is Brewster. He is a character from the Animal Crossing games. And he runs a cafe and he makes coffee. And he is very opinionated on the procurement and the consumption of coffee. And so I really connect to Brewster because I was a barista for a little while and I have come to realize that coffee is very delicious. And I feel like that's a lesson Brewster has been trying to teach me for a very long time that I've only just recently realized. Like, yes, coffee, coffee's delicious and I sometimes drink too much of it. I I probably don't drink that much coffee. I just feel like I do. It does not take a lot of coffee before I kind of just start tweaking out. So a lot of coffee for me might not be other people's a lot of coffee. But those were my oil paintings. And then I also did some digital art. I'm going to slap her in right here because I had fun with this. The sketch actually started... I had a completely different idea, and then as I was sketching it out, it was, it just turned out completely different. But I'm happy with how this looks. I am happy with how the digital painting ended up, because digital is kind of my nemesis, and also I think it might be helpful to see, um, this is, this is my Wacom tablet pen. Don't ask me why it's duct taped together. I I don't remember what happened. I I think the tip actually might be. I can't draw directly onto the tablet and have things work. It is a nightmare, which I've never been good at that anyway. But I can color things just fine. Maybe. Most of my issues with digital color kind of... It comes down to skill and occasionally fighting with the program. Uh, this isn't helping, but I don't think it's necessarily hindering me terribly. So that's that's something that's going on. <laughs> but I would like to practice a little more digital art in the future. There's a lot of things I want to practice. A lot of different painting techniques. Use a lot of different media, which is kind of the goal going into July. I should mention that the one thing I have on my list that I, I did not accomplish for June, I didn't even really look at Whoa Awesome Space Babe X, but that is on the list for July. I'm gonna be honest, I think that after working on Whoa Awesome Space Babe for however many years it's been, I think I started in 2017 which right now feels like 10 years ago. It wasn't, but it feels like that long. I think I'm kind of just getting really tired of working on Whoa Awesome Space Babe, even though it has looked better every single issue, and I would like to come back to it at some point. I think I'm just really burnt out on that. So after Whoa Awesome Space Babe X, there's going to be a little break from that for an indeterminate amount of time because I'm not really sure how I want to 
because I do want to reboot the story to some degree. And I know I've mentioned before in the vlogs that I would like to do a graphic novel that kind of serves as a soft reboot. But I think what I want to focus on is things like Brain Fart Comics, where I have the freedom to do just something entirely different in each issue. I was thinking, though, I, I've got a story I thought of that I could stretch out into four issues of Brain Fart Comics. I'm not totally sure if I want to do that. But Brain Fart Comics gives me the freedom to do something completely different each issue, so I'm not getting burnt out on one idea. And I also really want to work on that Beowulf comic that I have been talking about and have not had the opportunity to get to. Because, well, awesome Space Babe X is like the obstacle that's right there. So that needs to get taken care of. That is one of three things. I need to get some water. Give me a second here. It always seems to be when I need to grab water on camera, it's the Batman cup that I'm drinking out of. I swear this isn't just an opportunity to flex that I have a, a Batman cup from, was that from McDonald's? What's the date on this? Uh, I can't, I don't know. 1995, I would have been two. Oh my goodness, that feels like a million years ago. Let's put that over there and not think about how long ago the 90s was. <laughs> okay, but as I was saying, July, there's basically one major goal, and that is, well, awesome Space Babe X, for fuck's sake. We're gonna take care of that, which July is a Camp NaNoWriMo month, so maybe this is the unofficial Camp NaNoWriMo thing. I think I said that exact thing in April. If you've been watching for any extended period of time, I think I've been talking about Whoa Awesome Space Babe X since October. This is an indication I've gotten burnt out. So this, I need to just have this finished to the best of my ability. Not half-ass it, because even if I'm tired of doing it, I don't want to put out a mediocre product. I want it to be the best it can be. Which is probably why it's taken me a really long time. I I always say this, I need to remind myself that good art, good anything, well done anything at all, but cooking, I don't know. Okay, well, not, not with all cooking, because if you take a long time cooking a steak, well done does not equal good in the steak world, but what I mean is that there are so many examples where if you want something to be good, you need to take a lot of time to make it good. And I keep having this idea that I can do things really fast and good. And if I'm not getting a bunch of things done, then I'm not actually doing anything. And that's not at all how it works. And I'm sure I've brought this up before, but I think this might be... This might even be from my portfolio class in college that I complain about. One of these days, I'm going to make a video, one of those art story time videos, where I'll just work on a piece, have some footage of that, and I'll just complain about that class. I'm going to tell the full story of the portfolio class, and you're going to hear everything I have to say about this teacher that I did not like, who has actually turned out to not be my least favorite teacher I ever had, in college. So that says a lot about who my least favorite teacher was. But someday I'll do a video and I'll tell the whole story. This guy had this very just produce art like a machine. This idea that you should be making a finished piece in every art session. Uh, this guy was not a painter or a drawer. He did photography and I don't really know what kind because I don't think I ever really saw his photography. I, I don't even know if he had an online portfolio, because I remember, I remember looking him up, I remember Googling him to see where is his portfolio? Does he have it online somewhere? And the only presence he seemed to have was his Facebook, so I don't know if he had a website somewhere anywhere. So I didn't really know what was going on with his art, but apparently he just had some interesting ideas about how producing art that's good worked. And I know that that's just 
not how I should be thinking about things. I should not be thinking in this, I need to just produce things like a machine sense. But for some reason, that's like stuck in my head because he very much was trying to push the idea that we were all very lazy. And I think this is an example. This is something I should bring up in the story time video is half of my problem in that class is I was taking things personally that weren't directed at me because I'm somebody that is making art all the time and there were people in our class that didn't necessarily do art outside of their art class. And when they brought portfolios, so at the beginning of that year, this is already turning into the story time, but I'll do a video someday where I just completely rant the whole time. You're going to hear the saltiest orange Zeppelin you've ever heard. But at the beginning of the semester, we were told to bring work in that we would say was portfolio worthy. And there were actually quite a few people where everything they had was something they had done in class and it was just the basic life drawing sketch a cow skull you could tell who was in what drawing class because you'd be like oh yeah that's the painting class assignment you do in david prochaska's class i recognize that i remember doing that and there were a very small handful of people in the class i was one of them who did have portfolios where it was 100% things they had done outside of class. Mine in particular, it was all things that had been done the summer before that class and maybe a little bit in the previous year. And it wasn't that I was just producing a bunch of art specifically to show in the portfolio class. It was that was just my regular output. So <laughs> when this teacher was doing the whole, well, you need to actually be making art. I was like, I am doing art, you dumb fuck and he wasn't talking to me and I was still getting offended so that's a me problem that is 100% a me problem but uh, anyway I don't remember what I was talking about before I started ranting oh my goodness I I'll come up with some really good art class stories and then maybe I'll do a little bit of a series of a art story time let's let's complain about things. <laughs> I usually like to have a more positive energy in the vlogs. You guys don't want to hear me bitch and moan unless maybe I'm being funny about it and that is the goal. I don't want to just be an absolute negative Nancy, bring the energy down terribly. So that's why I don't really like to complain about things like that because sometimes that just gets to be exhausting hearing people that just complain about absolutely everything. <laughs> I need some hydration after all that. <laughs> but all that to say that the main goal of July, whoa, awesome space babe X, I'm going to do more self-promotion, more just participating in art shares, do more connections. And I do have an opportunity that is going to be coming up at some point in the future that I'm going to keep a secret and I'm excited about that. So that, that will be fun, but right now it's a secret. And then the goal is just to do more practice, do more art studies. I had to go pause to get some more water. I had tortilla chips before filming this and I think I have some tortilla chip crumbles. So that it's making my throat very dry. I already get a dry throat when I talk sometimes. Sometimes by the end of these vlogs, it's like my eyes are starting to water and I just, my throat's complaining with me. But maybe that's an indication I need to wrap things up. So basically the, the goal, whoa, awesome space babe X. More art whoring as I'll call it. And just doing style studies, practicing painting and just taking art pieces I really like and basically copying them to learn more about the artist's style. It's going to continue on basically last month's goal of studying and practice. So that, that just about does it for this episode. So thank you guys so much for watching, hearing me rant about art classes that I haven't been in and God, five or six years that I'll have a story time episode coming. You'll, you'll get to hear the complaints. You'll get to hear the rants, but again, I appreciate you guys watching and I hope you have a 
great time making art.